So we have been studying a passage in the book of Psalms, Psalms chapter 15 and verse 1. And it says over here, King David, Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? Who may dwell in your holy hill? So we've been saying that God yearns for us to abide in Christ. God yearns for us to dwell in His presence in a continual communion with Him. But to live continuously in the presence of God, Psalms chapter 15 gives us a few adjustments that we got to make in our lives. Not massive major changes, but some tweaks and adjustments that if we were to make them, we can come from just having a momentary touch from God to a continual experience with Him on a daily basis. All right? So we already seen two of them. Let's look at verse 2. If you want to abide in his tabernacle, dwell in his holy hills, verse 2 says, he who walks uprightly and works righteousness. That means, number one, we need to adjust our walk. We need to adjust our walk. Number two, we need to adjust our works. So the last time we met together, we say, well, it is good to work for God, but it's even better to work with God. But the best of all is to minister unto the Lord. Okay, so when our walk is changed, our work will be transformed. Now, so we covered the first two. Look at number three, the third adjustment that we need. We need to adjust our words. We need to adjust our words, our walk, our works, our words. Look at verse two. The last part, it says, he is the person that speaks the truth in his heart. He speaks the truth in his heart. So our words can become the greatest blessing or the greatest hindrance to remaining in the presence of God. I have learned over the years that more often than not, it is our words that will take us out of God's presence than we walking out of his presence ourselves. It is our words. So very often, the words of praise can bring us to the highest level of experience with Him. And right after that, sometimes some careless words of pride can drop us back into carnality. So that is why I always tell the song leaders, tell the pastors, you got to be very careful what you say on the stage. You lead people into God's presence. And sometimes some careless words, some foolish words, Words of pride, words of anger, words of frustration. Kaboom. People will fall all the way from the presence into a realm of the flesh. Now, Jesus says in Mark 11, verse 22, 23, can we all read this together? It's a familiar passage starting now. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God, for assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. So words are very powerful. When Jesus spoke to the fish, when Jesus spoke to the waves, the wind, the dead man, the dead women, he spoke to the tree. When Jesus spoke to demons, things happen. Yeah, fish begin to jump out of the sea into the nets. Fish that swallowed a gold coin begin to bite Peter's hook. Dead men, dead women were raised to life. Winds and waves would instantly come when Jesus spoke. Right? When Jesus spoke, the fig tree withered away. When Jesus spoke, demons were cast out. Now, because words are so very powerful, they can cut both ways. Positive words of faith will bring in miracles. But negative words of anger, of frustration, the Bible says, can set a whole forest on fire. In fact, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33, the scripture tells us, be not deceived, evil communications corrupt good manners. Evil communications can just destroy our lives. 